Hey guys, Desert of Magic here, and if this looks like an awfully familiar video and you saw something very similar yesterday and then it mysteriously disappeared off my channel, that's because there was a slight error in the uh, video. So first YouTube takes like a four minute bite out of my video for no reason and just terminates it and then I have to re-upload that, but then this one uh, I made a slight typo. So this is the correct version with 144 instead of 114 on the spreadsheet. Now everybody's wondering what is the EV of a Kaladesh box, and a bunch of complete idiots who have no idea what they're talking about have thrown out ridiculous numbers once again, because it's like a, it's a tradition, it's a quarterly thing, uh, where they try to do headline grabbing, you know, clickbait garbage saying that the box is worth 80 bucks or whatever. Those people are idiots, don't listen to them. Here's why I'm right, because I'm going to show you all the numbers right in front of your face. The only thing that could be argued is that I used Card Kingdom's prices for the basis for everything just because they tend to be pretty accurate. Uh, they're a little optimistic, a little bit on the high side, but we're talking like 5 or 10% if that. I mean, on day one, they tend to be less than 10% above even eBay, so historically, they've been pretty accurate. Now, obviously, these are then uh, pre-order prices because the set doesn't come out for two days, uh, but I put them all on a spreadsheet, so here's all the math right here. Let's break it down. We've got the Mythics, there's 15 of them, there's all the prices, then we got the Rares, there's most of them, uh, they run off the page, obviously. You get 53 of those, and then you average them, but you count all the Rares twice. That's because for every Mythic printed, there are two of each individual Rare printed. So that makes it so that the Mythics are double the rarity of a Rare individually, but then as a whole, it's still 1 to 8.2 as the ratio of prevalence. It's something like that. That's why you only get like four mythics in a box on average. But for each individual card, one mythic compared to one rare, the rare is printed two to one. But trust me, that's the correct way to do the average. So the rare slot average, be it a mythic or a rare and adjusted for, for rarity, um, is $3.05. And so you multiply it by 36, you're already at $109.78. You've already broken the typical sale price of 100 or 105. Now let's keep going. We got the Masterpiece slash Invention. So they're called Masterpiece cards, but in this particular block, they're going to be called Inventions. There's all the prices right there. And uh, you can see they're kind of, you know, a pretty good spectrum. Um, the average price is then $85.67. So pretty good overall. On the bottom end, I wouldn't even call the $40 cards a, a bomb. I mean, $40 is insane. So that's the value of one masterpiece, but then to get the uh, added value to one given pack, you have to multiply it by the probability of pulling it. That's under the approximate pull chance uh, field, and it's about 0.694 repeating percent. So, you know, not very good. And of course, I got the number as 1 divided by 144. By the way, that's where the glitch was in my last video. It was damn close, though. But anyway, that means that the effective addition to the EV of one pack just from the Masterpiece cards is 59 cents, which that is pretty significant. I mean, considering that just the rare alone makes it just over $3. So about, what, one-sixth, one-seventh of the value so far is from Masterpieces? That's pretty significant, and that's about where I thought it would be. Next up, we're going to look at the foils, but I only count foil rares and foil mythics, and that's it. Uh, foil uncommons, I'm sure there's some that are worth like $8, but whatever. And the commons and uncommons themselves, I completely ignore. So, um, the estimated value of the rare slot itself, so mythics and rares, once again, weighted, you know, two to one rares against mythics. Um, I basically just took it and multiplied it by 1.4, because that seems to be a conservative estimate of the general price increase of a foil over a non-foil. Now, some of them go 2 to 1, and some of them go 1.2 to 1. So 1.4 seems a little conservative, if anything. And you do want to be conservative. You don't want to say, oh, I'm going to make all this money, and then you don't. So the average foil, rare, or mythic is $4.27, you know, just average value. Uh, and then you have to adjust that to see what that adds to your actual per-pack EV, because that's the base unit we're using. So you take your $4.27, and you multiply it by... Uh, 15 plus 53, which is the number of mythics plus the number of rares, divided by 264, which is the number that you can open in the set from boosters. So just the rares, just the mythics. And then multiply that, or <laughs> divide that number by four, because only one in four boosters have a foil in it at all. So you multiply it all out and get 27 cents. That is the boost in the pack EV. So you can see the Masterpiece cards, even though they're ultra rare, they're so expensive that they're worth more in the pack in general than a foil mythic or foil rare. Makes sense because, you know, the like I said, the average foil mythic or rare is $4.27 and the average Masterpiece is like $85. 
So you add up all three of the EVs, the, the rare slot, the masterpiece potential, and the foil mythic and rare prevalence or whatever, and uh, you get $3.92 per booster, multiply it by 36 so you get one box, and it's one hundred and forty-one ten. Now the funny thing is the MSRP on a booster pack is $3.99, so the MSRP on a box is like $1.43 something whatever. So technically the $1.4110 is $2.54 short. So I don't know who would buy a box for like $1.43 whatever, it's actual state and MSRP, that's crazy. But if you did, you would lose $2.54, although if you consider that like every common is worth $0.25 cents and every land is worth $0.05 cents and whatever, you'd be way above it. So now obviously it's worth mentioning that this doesn't work on the small scale because of the variance of pulling a masterpiece or not pulling one. Um, you could have like four boxes and still maybe miss one. So let's say I ordered 20 cases. So that's times six because it's six boxes is 120 boxes times 36, which is 4,320 total boosters. Divide that by 144 boosters, which, you know, one in 144 is the sort of estimated rarity of the masterpieces. Uh, you get 30. So I would be expected to open 30 ex or expeditions. <laughs> I'm going way back. 30 masterpieces uh, if I ordered that many cases, which I absolutely did not. Now, if you open 100 cases, you're going to get 150 uh, masterpieces, plus or minus a little bit. Now, I will say that uh, you won't pull 8 and you won't pull 80. You're going to pull 30 if you open 20 cases. I mean, it'll be plus or minus maybe like 3. I'm not sure on the exact reasonable variance. It's all that Sigma crap that I never bothered to learn. But basically, it doesn't fluctuate much. From what I've heard from everybody reporting this ever, it just doesn't fluctuate much. Uh, I opened like... 18 cases or 17 or something like that of OGW and pulled 23 expeditions if I remember correctly. So that's like plus or minus one, you know, with rounding and stuff away from what I would have been expected to pull. So can large single sellers that open a bunch of stuff, can they count on that uh, little boost of 59 cents per booster over the long term? Yeah, they absolutely can. The only problem comes in the uh, variance, or as I like to call it, and everybody else in the math field, standard deviation of the price of the masterpieces. It goes all the way from 40 to 250. But if you look at the actual numbers, it doesn't really, you know, just go to 250 and 40. If there was nothing between those two numbers, you would have such a high variance, it would be a catastrophe. But no, it's a range. I mean, you got your 50s, your 60s, your 80s, 120s, all the way up. So that definitely helps kill the variance a little bit, but um, you know, if you're opening 30 masterpieces and there are only 30 masterpieces, that's like you, you'd be expected to pull, I think, one of each or something with probability. I'm not 100% sure about that, but that's like a variance of plus or minus one, which would be like zero. It's the same as foil Tarmogoyfs. I mean, they were responsible for like 20 something dollars of the entire estimated value of a Modern Masters 2 box, the whole box. So if you pulled one, Great. If you didn't, you just lost that amount effectively per box. So everybody's saying it's all doom and gloom. Oh, a box is worth 80 something dollars. It's just sensationalist nonsense. I mean, they just throw it out there. Oh, we did the calculations. Trust us. And this is what we came up with. Well, they live in fantasy land where they just want to get article views and video views. Uh, back in reality where I live, here's the numbers. I mean, the, there they are. Can't really refute them. They're right in front of your face. So let's say Card Kingdom was 10% high. Okay, 141.10 per box multiplied by 0 0.9. 126.99 a box. That's still not bad. I mean, it's not good, but it's not bad. So yeah, I think Kaladesh will be about the same as any other set. I mean, the, the average rare price went down the toilet because masterpieces are responsible for a higher percentage of the booster value. It's quite simple. I don't think people are going to over open because they've already had this happen twice. There was two sets with expeditions. It was recently people have given up on their chance of opening them. And if anything, it'll make people open five or 10% more than they normally would just as like a psychological thing. Now I should say that the return on a box for BFZ looked like it was, I think it was like $185 or something. Like, it was absurd because people were like, oh, yeah, rares and mythics are good. They're powerful. Okay, cool. People are going to buy them. Yay. And then on top of that, expeditions. And expeditions were like an extra, you know, big fraction of a dollar. So every singles seller on planet Earth opened the hell out of that set because it was guaranteed money. And then the mythics and rares uh, fell really quickly because of supply. Also, you had everybody, single sellers, players, longtime players, not longtime players, 
everybody over opened it to get to the full art lands. Those things at the time were 17 cents a piece. I mean, if, if you're looking at the land in the back of a booster that's a 100% pull chance and it's adding 17 cents to the effective value of a booster, yeah, you're going to open way too many. And then, like I said in the other video, there's complete morons who think that they're going to sit on them for five years and they're going to be worth two bucks a piece like the original Zendikars, you know, full-blown retail. No, that's never going to happen. Never, ever, ever in a million years. The supply is way too high. There is probably a hundred million full art lands floating around, if not more. So yeah, people had a lot of motivation to overopen those sets. It will not happen again. I don't think Kaladesh is just going to crash day one. Um, but I don't think it's going to be like, oh, that big money-making set. It's pretty far from that, unfortunately. So what does this mean for you? Well, you're not losing money if you paid 105 for the box. So that's good news. That's about all you can draw from this unless you plan on opening a bunch of cases. I will say, though, that uh, as of today, which my shipment is showing up, let's see, Thursday, and it's currently Tuesday, I don't know how much product I'm getting. Welcome to the world of Wizards of the Coast. I was allocated 60 fat packs and my distributor had to cut it down to 12, so that sucks because there wasn't enough to go around because, once again, Wizards didn't print enough. So, let me outline what this means in a, a slightly different, more understandable analogy. Okay, I open a hot dog stand and I'm doing 500 bucks worth of sales per day because I spent money on coupons and I track the return from the marketing, you know, money I spent and, oh, it's like a 30% overall return. Then you've got recurring customers because my products are good and, you know, and I got my staff calculations in there and the cost of the dogs and everything. Everything looks good. The outlook's good. I'm making overall a 50% profit margin or whatever. So $500 profit per day after spending, you know, in expenses and rent and licensing and staff, you know, a thousand a day. So 1500 gross a day, no problem. So I put all that time and effort establishing a business, getting a customer base and all that. And then one day I just decide I'm not going to sell any hot dogs, not going to stock it. Oh, well, my customers want hot dogs, but I'm not going to produce any hot dogs today. So my marketing ROI drops to zero. My gross drops to zero. My net drops to uh, negative a thousand. My customers show up and I tell them, sorry, we don't have anything for you, go away, and then they get pissed off and probably don't return, so that's permanent loss of money. Take a hit on the goodwill rating of your business, which could have monetary value if you're a corporation and like to BS your stockholders. That's right, it's a corporately held hot dog stand. <laughs> I'm not sure I made this simpler, I think I made it more complicated. If you run a store and then somebody walks in to buy something you don't have any, that's the worst thing you could do. Ever. I mean, there's, there's really nothing, unless you like do something to get yourself sued, there's nothing worse you can do. You go from making money to zero, your marketing ROIs go to zero, everything goes to zero, and your business goes straight to hell. So back in the wonderful world of Wizards of the Coast, where they take a random guess at how much they should print, tell the distributors how much they're getting, not ask them how much to print, and then the distributors sometimes get stuck with product but almost always get shorted on product, then there's not enough to go around and every store in the world is pissed. Uh, that's the way they do business, apparently. Thanks, Wizards. You're really helping a lot. Seriously, they, like, who is running the show over there? It must just be, like, like a chimpanzee that they hired as an intern as a joke, and then somehow he moved his way up the corporate ladder. Now he's head chimpanzee in charge of, like, product print quantity. So the fact that there's not enough product to go around, and everybody who ordered a bundle, as they call it now, aka a fat pack, is pissed and didn't get enough, uh, that's going to help the price a little bit. So a little extra bonus for you there. But yeah, I think, you know, within a week, as usual, the cards will drop like 30, 40%. That's just what happens every set. But I think day one, you can expect a 140, 110 re return. I mean, that that's the EV. That is what it is. So hopefully you guys have a fun, fun Kaladesh release day, and I'll see you guys next video.